Hello. This one's going to be another uh, hitchhiking one, uh, following up where I found myself in the, uh, the Badlands, South Dakota. So, <clears throat> I realized that it's probably going to be hard to keep them at, at 20 minutes, um, especially some of these, some of these, uh, hitchhiking ones, man. Um, there's just so much that, that went down, um, especially these hitchhiking ones. So, I think I need to, need to add in, like, when, um, I didn't have an ID when I left. Uh, it was one of the things I figured I wouldn't bring, I wouldn't need. I figured I was probably gonna go through some rough times and I, I, I planned on coming back, you know, so um, if I needed it I would come back for it, but otherwise it was safer at the house because odds are I was gonna go through some experiences that would cause me to lose it you know um so i didn't have it at that uh first park um uh, down there in tennessee when i was woken up um i when i couldn't prove who i was that's when he went on about the park ranger went on about the the vagrancy and all that and uh i figured you know if if I go to report something all the way, way out here in the middle of nowhere, and I, I can't even prove who I am, it probably wouldn't turn out good, you know, so, um, that's what kind of made me want to leave town quickly, you know, even though there, there really wasn't much to this town, um, I just, I wanted to get out of there, you know, uh, rather than kind of get tied down in a report and then having to show this and do that and all these other things you know I just um, I got some I got some food and water you know um, fresh bandages I cleaned it up with hydrogen peroxide and all that you know and fresh bandages on some stuff uh, my back had been all tore up uh, when I fell down into the ravine so um the nice old lady the nice old lady there uh she treated my my back you know but um so i left out of there and it, it was right around sunset and sunset out there is just insane but what i noticed is um see i, I got into town several hours prior and it was all sunny out and all that but here comes sunset and um, the wind had picked up and uh, it wasn't exactly warm you know so I'm walking back east uh, you know with my back to the wind and, and I got dust and stuff kind of flying by me and it's already dark off to the east, but there's this golden hue, and I remember looking down at my shadow, and my shadow just stretched for like, at, at some times it seemed miles, you know. It stretched out to like a vanishing point with this golden sunset light behind me. And I'm walking out east from this town, and I see this, uh, I see this snake coming out of the ravine up here on the to the left of this road and I also see like this uh, like this uh, brown black looking Bronco and um, the brown black Bronco is coming down this road dude and it kind of swerved towards the rattlesnake and the rattlesnake it got out of the way you know and the Bronco went by me and uh, that rattlesnake was coming across the road and it got to where my shadow it was it was a good 30 yards up, 40 yards up, you know, and it's crossing the road, and when it got to my shadow, uh, it stopped, 
and like so I'm walking and it stopped in like the shadow of my my head and then my body and when it got to my legs like I'm walking closer and closer so now it's only in the shadow of my legs it started like moving back and forth from leg to leg and it was like I found that really odd you know and it and so I got a little bit closer and I slowed down and I'm I'm maybe like 10 feet from it and uh it it didn't seem like it was even scared of me it like it did that coil up where it it like coils up and it's half of its body is up in the air and like this s kind of shape you know and it, it rattled but instead of like a, a rattlesnake rattle it only rattled like three times like like that it, it did not sound like a rattlesnake and so off the road it went you know it went off to the right uh, heading south and um, I don't know that moment where it kind of it it mesmerized me when it stood up and did them triple to three rattles um, that felt like a pretty good amount of time like all I heard was the rattles in the wind you know so um, when it it went off the road to the uh, to the south I went ahead and I, I followed you know now it, it didn't go slow or anything like this thing it it took off you know so I didn't see exactly where it went but there was a uh, like this this old I don't know it could have been a horse path or some sort of path but there was like this path right there it had a small gate I had to hop over and I went down I went in the direction it went you know what I mean and um, so I'm walking and now the sun's you know to my right and the winds blowing in from that same way but up ahead you know I'm heading south and up ahead is uh, I can see like this railroad uh, bridge I'm like, huh, you know, and I, I, I walk up to it, you know, and it turns out that's what it actually is, a old railroad bridge. And I'm like, there's there's not really any railroads on it, but the bridge is still there, you know. I mean, the bridge is there, and it's got some railroad to it, but there's no other railroad really around it, you know. It's got this, like, ridge in the middle of nowhere where uh, I guess a railroad used to be, and this bridge is what's left. And by this time, dude, the sun's already down, and I'm, I'm dealing with, like, dying twilight, you know. And the wind's picking up, and um, I heard a, a couple thunderclaps, you know, so I figured I'm going to hunker down underneath this here bridge, you know. And um, the, the kind people of that last town had given me, you know, a new shirt to wear, and this one was kind of equipped for the area and the weather, as well as a change of clothes, you know, so I actually put on that extra change of clothes, and uh, I climbed up in the corner of um, that, that bridge, and I also, I guess I need to uh, bring up the fact, all this time I've been on the road, uh, I did not leave with a tent. Um, I did not leave with a sleeping bag. I left with some clothes and a backpack, you know. And uh, with the clothes and backpack, what I would normally do is I'd put the backpack on the front of me. Instead of on my back, I'd put it on my stomach with the hoops on and everything. And I would just hunch over on top of it. And if I wasn't hunched over, sleeping, sitting up, with my back against something you know that way my back is against a secure location and I only have to deal with what's out in front of me you know that's how I like to kind of fall asleep it's it's kind of secure um, if I wasn't sitting up I'd be laying over but my backpack would still be there you know in that same uh, stomach position uh, to kind of keep my shoulders separated when I'm laying on my side you know uh, but yeah, no tent, no sleeping bag, roughing it the whole time. Um, so that's basically where I was back to, you know, um, backpack. It, 
uh, since I took out the spare clothes, it wasn't quite as fluffed up, but um, tucked up underneath that bridge, I felt pretty secure, man. Um, I kind of dozed off during the storm, you know, and when I woke up, everything's still kind of dry and, and the stars are out and it's like a, a quarter moon to a half moon, somewhere in there. And I mean, for uh, being... <clears throat> For being so like desolate looking, uh, it sure had a lot of nightlife sounds. Um, I heard the coyotes, you know. I'm sure I heard some owls I had never heard before. Uh, some odd like uh, bird calls for sure. Uh, there was sounded like some like a mountain lion or some sort of that, you know. Definitely a big cat of some sort whatever they have up there there was this uh, crazy sounding scream that came uh, just before the crack of dawn cause I had slept pretty good through the night and I had woken up probably four-ish you know and I'm, I'm taking in everything and I'm sitting there listening and enjoying it and uh, kinda watching the star movement and just the amount of stars was incredible and the sounds were really enchanting dude and uh just before sunrise um it was like maybe five-ish uh, i heard this crazy scream dude it sounded like a woman it sounded like a witch is what i thought at the time uh the way it screamed with like this cackle almost like a crow but it, it was not a crow at all but it, it did it one time and uh, it kind of froze the night and uh, it was like sunrise started whenever the stillness of night broke you know uh, it was because like this the gold that this sunrise brings started changing the night sky from that purplish color to this like intense yellow gold and it happened within like five minutes it seemed like there was just so much light starting to fill up the air uh, which out there on the plains like that uh, I can see you know I'm, I'm so used to all the mountains with the trees um, sunrise came quick uh, t dawn's twilight moved fast you know um, but yeah the stillness seemed like I heard that scream and everything else seemed to hear it and nothing seemed to go on until all of a sudden the sky started getting brighter you know and then all these bugs started flying by and all these calls started happening it was like they just turned on the the bug radio um, there was that's something else I remember is there was so many bugs flying by dude um, so I got up and uh, I figured I'm gonna follow this uh, railroad uh, it's gone but I'm gonna follow it I could still see it you know and I got up on this hill and this hill kind of kept me up out of the, the surrounding lands you know so it was a safe place to walk it was flat and pretty easy to navigate so I start heading east you know towards sunrise <clears throat> and the Sun come up and it was just so beautiful man um, the sunrise looked like the landscape the way there was like these layers of of yellows and reds and, and and whites and you know it all turned blue eventually but <clears throat> it was just it was it was crazy and I'm walking down this old ripped up railroad that's kind of like this berm up on top this ridge that you can just walk freely through the bad this part of the badlands in man and I mean to the left and to the right it's just like rocks and this and that you know and I'm walking down here and uh 
I come up on where it had this old wash and it had, it had taken out the bridge uh, for the railroad you know it was still kind of there but it was all broken down and everything so I had to get off this ridge and walk down and around uh, one thing I noticed is it it had some good dry wood and uh, that's something I'd been missing being in this parts of the the area man so uh, I went ahead and I grabbed I, I couldn't carry that much I grabbed a good two pounds of that dry wood uh, about a coffee diam a, co a big coffee can diameter of all these shards and stuff uh, some of them were pretty big you know some of them were thumb size to uh, wrist size uh, but most of them were just like shards and flakes uh, you know like three inches to ten inches long and I put it in my backpack uh, for later you know I'd been missing carrying fire I'd been missing a fire at night if I needed it so it wasn't going to provide me like <clears throat> any period of uh, fire but it would provide me with enough to get by at the time I needed it you know especially as dry as this wood was man it 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 was gonna burn hot you know and uh, I was getting hungry man you know but I didn't really have anything to eat and there wasn't no water around nowhere and I'm used to catching fish to eat you know and now here I am out in the middle of like basically a desert you know but I get down I go around that there uh, that broken down bridge and I, I make my way back up on top of that ridge and I'm I keep going further down that ridge and it is getting near noon now and uh, there was like this tree it was the only tree I'd seen and seemed like ever dude you know so here's this tree just all nice pretty green and there, it had this big old shady spot and under that high noon sun man I got up underneath that tree it felt good it felt good you know and I'm sitting there and I'm just like oh man I'm so hungry <laughs> you know I could feel my tummy just just gurgling and I'm trying to fight it off I, but I didn't even have anything to drink you know to kind of fight off that you know and I'm <clears throat> so I kind of lean back against the tree in the shade uh, I'd taken off my backpack I was holding it in my lap and I closed my eyes and I just was like man I was kind of almost daydreaming about catching fish to eat you know and I heard that that triple rattle again that t -t -t and I noticed, you know, it was a rattlesnake. It was, I, it would, it would be crazy if it was the same rattlesnake. But what I also noticed is all these prairie dogs started chirping and barking all around, dude. And that rattlesnake, it like, it did it again. And uh, so I look off to my right, cause I hear all this commotion. It was like the rattlesnake kind of broke uh, my daydreaming. And then the prairie dogs started yipping and yapping and doing all these whistles and stuff. So I'm like, what the? And I, you know, I open my eyes and I look off to my right. And there's, there's like at least a half a dozen of these prairie dogs, like, standing up and laying down and looking around. And I heard the rattlesnake do it again. And it made them do it all over again. And I started hearing this, like, this wind. You know, it's just like like a rushing sound and I'm like you know what the heck's going on here and then all of a sudden one of the prairie dogs I was looking at this hawk just pummels it like out of nowhere dude just drills it and you see like fur and dust fly everywhere and he like he like beaks it and he like stabs it and stabs it with his talons and he beaks it and it's like I go whoa you know I said that out loud like whoa and it turns and looks at me and it takes off I, I jumped up now I heard the rattlesnake so I'm looking around for the rattlesnake I'm like I'm not seeing it you know and I, that uh, prairie dogs maybe 
15, 20 yards. That prairie dog's about 15, maybe 20 yards away. Uh, and I, So I walk over there and I get it. And I come back and yeah, he had holes all through him. And like he had some like skin chunks, huge skin chunks just ripped, dude. But uh, he was about a, a good half pound of meat I could eat, you know. So now I got this uh, prairie dog that this hawk provided for me. And I got this, this wood that the snake led me to. And uh, I'm sitting underneath this tree with shade, man. And I, I, I put together a, a, a little fire, man. And I, I skinned him and I, I did all that. And I, he wasn't that much. But, I mean, to me, that was like, I just went to, like, Texas Roadhouse, dude. I mean, to me, that was awesome. Um, you know, the, the legs, the shoulders, uh, they really, the back strip was almost like a small piece of broken bacon. You know, there wasn't much there, but the legs, they had some, some chewable parts on them, you know? And, uh... So I'm sitting there and, oh, man, it was so good, you know. And I remember thinking, you know, it'd be great if I had something to drink. And I no longer thought that, and I heard thunder. <laughs> and I, I laughed, you know. I turned around and off to the northwest, dude. The, the sky was just black. And uh, my laugh just instantly dissolved because I had never seen a storm like that um, not where I'm from um, and it's like a good 90 degrees of the horizon is just you see sky over here and there's like even if you go if you looked uh, kind of almost west southwest it was like blue sky um, just like if you looked back over to the uh, the east it was like blue sky. And here I am. I'm sitting here. And I'm kind of facing east. You know. Uh, and, my, and my campfire is kind of a little bit southeast of it. Actually. Of this tree. You know. And. Um, but anyway. So. I look over my left shoulder. And I see the whole like north looks black. And the, the, the clouds above the black are just this rolled marble twisted smoky uh, scary looking sky um, and like I said I had never seen anything like that not where I'm from so all my happiness kind of went away real quick and uh, so I'm thinking okay you know, I, I went ahead and I hurried up and I finished eating what I had, you know, and I, I put out the campfire and I saved what pieces of wood I could, you know, and I snuffed those out and I'm packing up my little uh, homeless man campsite that I had made and I feel the headwind coming in and it was, uh, there was this weird thunder, man. It was just like, almost like bombs were going off, just boom, 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 boom. just boom. It wasn't rolling thunder these were like explosions and um, there were bright flashes too man and the the sun went away and it's getting closer and the winds picking up and I'm hustled um, I'm kind of hunkered against this tree you know and I'm thinking man this probably ain't a good spot and no sooner than I thought that um, I remember and I remember there was a bright flash like ringing in my ears and like the flash was so bright I couldn't see anything you know and I, I was blinking my eyes I remember I went to look up and there was just pressure and uh, so then now I'm in like these muddy tunnels and uh, I don't know where I am or anything it's just like I remember I was in these 
these muddy tunnels <clears throat> and they were kind of like square shaped and somebody behind me kept saying go keep moving so I'm, I'm crawling and it's all dark and there's I don't know where the light source was there was some sort of a light source that let me know that I'm in this muddy square tunnel that somebody behind me keeps telling me to keep moving and like I see off to my right like there's another tunnel but they told me keep moving keep going so I kept going straight it's like I was getting so tired dude and they told me to keep moving keep going and it was like I couldn't even crawl anymore dude and it was like I was laying down in these dark muddy tunnels <clears throat> and somebody behind me kept telling me to crawl you know crawl and I kept crawling <clears throat> and there was like up ahead you could finally see like this little teeny square of light you know and they kept telling me to crawl and I I can't say as though I was even crawling anymore I just remember they kept telling me to crawl and um, I come out of that that square of light and it was like all I remember was breathing in deep dude <clears throat> and uh, and when I did I was arching my back and what had happened was uh, that tree got struck by lightning did uh, like half of the top fell down right next to me but I was so blinded by it I didn't have time to move and when it fell down next to me then it leaned over and fell like half one of the branches fell and hit me and it pushed me face down on my back uh, into the mud because where I was sitting that tree when it rained uh, there was like a huge mud puddle right there between it and the tracks and that uh, tree top had me pinned down I was sitting up but it pinned me down with my legs crossed uh, face down pushing on my back in the mud and uh, I come to and there's like water like already up to my knees you know and I'm like I, I got my my necks arched up and my backs being pushed down and uh, the back of my head is just pounding I can barely breathe <clears throat> I was choking on water and uh so I, I take my hands you know and i do like probably the the hardest push-up i've ever done in my life to push up my chest away from the ground so i could breathe and take a breath and uh when i got that breath in uh, i didn't just exhale it i like yelled it out and when i did i I like pushed that branch off of me and that branch was huge dude uh, that that whole treetop had come down so it was basically half a tree and I don't know how I was able to do that but I did and uh, my back hurt so bad dude but the branch was off of me and uh, I figured I got to get away from this tree you know they say lightning doesn't strike twice but I didn't want to risk it you know so I stood up and I'm like the wind is like the headwind had passed but the wind is still strong the rain felt like little grains of sand just pelting on my face so I'm kind of wobbling down this I, I kept the, the railroad to my left kind of blocking the northern lee because it was coming out of the north northwest so that kind of blocked it a little bit 
and I wobbled down this this uh, the side of this rail old railroad until I came up on this old like it was another uh, old bridge and it was also broke down um, but there was enough of the structure left that there was a pocket I could get up in you know I crawled up in that pocket man and I I was like my back was so hurt dude it was my back was throbbing my head was throbbing and like I went to reach up there and feel like my, my neck and my head you know and it felt like I was sunburnt and I was like what the you know and I looked at my arms and my arms were sunburnt the backs of my hands were sunburnt and it, they it was like really really sunburnt like they were lobster red dude and they were so like stiff <laughs> and my ears had that same thing going on and I just remember that hurt so much dude um, and the, the rain was so heavy I just I passed out the last thing I remember is the amount of pain the sunburnt feeling was giving me um, and I woke up to like this distant honking you know it sounded like a, a, a big rig just laying on his horn just you know and it woke me up and I'm like sitting there in the night the next thing you know it was like I don't know what they were I'm guessing they were deer but it was about like four or five of them just shot by right over the railroad jumped off kept going uh, it was a bit of a commotion you know but I stayed still and I just listened you know but um, based on how long they took to get there I really wasn't that far from a road is what I remember thinking so you know sunrise comes up and all that you know I'm super stiff super sore uh, my back's hurt but you know I could walk it off the main thing that sucked was uh, everything was so sunburnt I could barely flex my hands and my uh, like my skin would crack you know so I get out from underneath there and I fin I, I walk east on that uh, old railroad again you know and I noticed off to the the north a little bit <clears throat> it was overcast this day which thank goodness you know and there was a bit of a breeze which kind of had a nip to it uh, but it felt really good on on the sunburns man it felt really good um, and I kind of followed this this old railroad down to where it it met this road and as I'm there there was like this uh, cattle fence there and as I'm crossing this this cattle fence man uh, this dude in a pickup rolls up he's like boy you look like you've had a rough night I said well yes sir I have <clears throat> you know and I told him I think I'm struck by lightning and he said it looks like you've been struck by lightning uh, he said turn around he said yeah and uh, he said did you did you crap your pants and I was like well no and I looked down you know and it, the whole bottom of my pants were burned uh, I didn't even realize it you know but like the back end of my pants from like the rear of my knee up to my uh, belt line was all pretty much charred black uh, the material was still there but it looked funny um, so I guess it ran down the tree through my my clothes I don't know but that dude picked me up uh, he was from Sioux Falls and uh, he took me to this road and that road honestly it was it was kind of a daze he was a really nice fella um, I don't remember much except getting something to eat I don't remember where we got whatever I ate you know uh, but I remember Sioux Falls cuz uh, he took me into like a thrift store there 
and he got me some clothes man and uh he actually he got me a hotel room and I went in there and I had taken a shower a real shower you know and uh he got me like some stuff like deodorant and aloe for the the burns and all that and uh, he, I was so thankful you know and he said you know my payment to him was the story he gets to he gets to tell people you know <laughs> I thought that was funny, man. Um, but I was I was extremely grateful, and um, I think I'll uh, I'll end it there, man. And the, he hooked me up with a hotel room, so I'll end it there. Uh, Just wanted to say thanks for. Um, all the thumbs up and comments and new subs uh, pretty cool uh, it really helps with the uh, the algorithms so just wanted to say thank you so I'm working on getting patreon up and going and um, I, I want to say thank you to my patreon members uh, you guys are awesome <laughs> so thank you and this part is for my Patreon members. Um, I appreciate you.